Good evening. Welcome to the Zoning Board of Examiners and Appeals for November 4th, 2021. Will the clerk please call the roll? Ellen McKay. Here. Dave Hale. Here. Jonathan Lang. Here. Dale Smythe. Here. Skylar Quinn. Here. Jackie Sabina and Andrew Romerdahl are excused. You have a quorum. Thank you. Thank you. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes? Move to approve the minutes. Ms. McKay moves to approve. May I have a second? Second. Second from Mr. Hale. Are there any objections to approving the minutes? Hearing none, minutes are approved. Moving on to disclosures. Does anyone have anything to disclose? Ms. McKay? I was not in attendance at the August 12, 2021 meeting when the case 2021-0090 was heard, but I viewed the video of the meeting and I'm prepared to vote on the associated resolution 2021-011, item A on the consent agenda. Thank you. Are there any other disclosures? Mr. Uh, Hale? Yeah, I was also absent on uh, that date, and I listened to the recordings, and I'm prepared to uh, vote the same. Thank you. Are there any other disclosures? Mr. Smite? Uh, yes, same as the others. I was absent from the meeting, but I also specifically uh, listened to the video, and I'm ready to vote on Resolution 2021-011. Thank you. Mr. Quinn, do you have any disclosures? No. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, under the consent agenda items B, C, D, and E, we do not have a quorum to approve those items. Those will all be pulled, so we will only be voting on item A for the consent agenda, which is 2021-0090. Did I did not disclose. Um, I was present for that, and I will be voting on that item. Uh, but I was, I was recused from, oh, I, was, I was absent from uh, those other items. So I, I'm not able to vote on those, and that's why we don't have a quorum to act on those items. With that, may I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Move to approve the consent agenda. And a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Are there any objections to the approval of the consent agenda? Consent agenda passes. As has been stated, we have a short board this evening. When there is a short five-member board or commission and a postponement is offered to and agreed to by the petitioner, they will be moved to the next regular agenda. This should occur within 30 days, which does not require re-noticing the case. If the petitioner is willing to postpone but unable to attend the next available meeting date within 30 days, the petitioner has a one-time only option to choose the next date certain he or she can attend at no extra fee. When a postponement is requested by the petitioner, there is a rescheduling fee and a new public hearing date shall be determined by the planning division. This will put their case in the next available cutoff date queue as if they were submitting their case for the first time. Are the petitioners in case 2021-0105 present? Uh, could I have you come forward? There's a black dot, press that button. There. Uh, state your name, please. This is Nick Rhodes. And you understand that we have a short board this evening? Yes. Would you like to postpone or continue this evening? Continue. Thank you. If you'll have a seat, I'd like to see if the other petitioner is here. Uh, case 2021-0118. Yes. Uh, if you'd come forward, please. Black dot. 
The, press the black dot. No, no. There, it's on the, yeah. There you go, oh, yep. Oh, I got it, okay. State your name, please. State your name. Herbert Wilden. And would you like to postpone or would you like to continue this evening? Continue this evening. Thank you. Thank you. The first case we have this evening is 2021-0105. Will the staff please describe the notice given in this case? Yes, thank you, Chair. On September 20th, 2021, a total of 447 public hearing notices were mailed in accordance with the procedures outlined in Title 21 of Anchorage Municipal Code. Thank you. Are there any objections to the sufficiency of notice in this case? Seeing none, will the staff please present the case? Thank you, Chair. Please uh, note for this case the additional information that is in Supplementary Packet 1. Uh, the additional information is the verification of nonconforming status document. Uh, the applicant had provided this as part of their application, and it was uh, inadvertently left out in materials passed forward for the packet. This is a dimensional variance request to allow an existing two-family dwelling front exterior west wall to encroach 4.4 feet in a replacement arctic entry roof overhang, stairs landing, and entry pathway to encroach 9.9 .9 feet into the required 20-foot front setback. Uh, summaries for the variance request are found on the table of, on page 3 of the packet, uh, in a diagram on page 23, and in photos on pages 18 through 21. The existing layout was determined to be uh, legal non-conforming structures. The applicant needs to replace the cracked and failing Arctic entry and address framing and plumbing issues in the main floor bathroom. In doing so, they also wish to expand the size of the Arctic entry and relocate the front entry door to face the driveway with a covered walkway. Uh, the exterior west wall encroachment of the home will not increase with the remodel, but the expansion of the Arctic entry and the covered entry structures do increase the nonconformity, uh, no longer making them legal nonconforming structures, and thus the request for the variance. The planning department received one phone call from a neighbor uh, the neighbor thought the variance request was reasonable since it would extend the nonconformity mostly to the south and not farther towards each street. There are no objections to the granting of this variance from agencies. In order to approve the variance, the application must state with particularity the relief sought and must specify the facts or circumstances that are alleged to show the application substantially meets the following eight standards. I'll just review the eight standards in brief from my staff report. Uh, standard A, the department found not to be met. Uh, there are no extraordinary physical circumstances to the property. Uh, there are no streams, wetlands, or slope. Standard B was also found to not be met by the department. Uh, the strict application of the code does not create an exceptional hardship or deprive the applicant of rights commonly enjoyed by other property owners in the R2M district, uh, the applicant could explore an alternative construction layout to stay within the existing footprint of the home. Standard C was found to be partially met. Uh, the hardship is partially self-imposed in, and for convenience. The applicant must repair the cracked and shallow foundation beneath the Arctic entry. Uh, however, the applicant could choose a, a different layout uh, the alignment is necessary to keep a closet in a bedroom that is being eliminated in order to construct the accessible bathroom. Standard D was found to be met. Uh, the variance will not adversely affect the use of adjacent property as permitted under code. Uh, as mentioned, the neighbor called the planning department and thought the proposed renovation would not adversely impact his, his property. Standard E is met. Uh, the variance will not change the character of the R2M district. 
The R2M district is a primary implementing zoning district of the compact mix, mixed residential low land use res designation in the 2040 land use plan. This land use designation includes a street orientation for buildings, uh, while the relocation of the exterior front entry from facing each, each street to face the driveway lessens the street orientation of the home. The design is such that it's open, uh, so the department determined that this standard can still be met with the condition that uh, this is not fully enclosed to still maintain the connection to the street. Standard F is met. Uh, the uh, Granting the variance will not adversely affect the health, safety, and welfare of the people of the municipality. Standard G is met. Uh, the ADA does not apply to this residential dwelling, but the encroachment would facilitate the remodeling of a bathroom to incorporate accessibility design guidelines. Standard H uh, was found to be not met. Uh, the property owners could change the design of their home repairs and reno renovations to remain in the same footprint uh, that are legally non-conforming encroachments. Uh, in summary, the department finds that standards D, E, F, and G are substantially met. Standard C is partially met, and standards A, B, and H are not met. Uh, code requires that all eight standards be substantially met in order for a variance to be granted. Therefore, the department recommends denial of the variance. If after a public hearing, the board finds that all eight standards are substantially met, then the approval should be subject to the following conditions. Condition one, the dimensional variance approval is to allow for an existing two-family dwelling western wall to encroach 4.4 feet into the front setback and for a replacement arctic entry stairs, landing entry pathway and roof overhang to encroach 9.9 .9 feet into the required 20-foot front setback within the Archerium district as shown on the site plan uh, that was included in the application. Uh, number two, the front exterior entryway stairs and landing may not be fully enclosed and must maintain visibility to each street in order to main the, maintain the character of the zoning district and to maintain consistency with the land use plan. And three, prior to this variance becoming effective, a uh, notice of zoning action be filed with the State of Alaska District Recorder's Office. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are there any questions of staff by the board? Are there any questions of staff by the applicants? Uh, the applicant shall now give his presentation. Throughout the proceedings, the burden of proof rests upon the applicant who must convince the board by a preponderance of evidence that the variance should be granted. The applicant has 10 minutes for the presentation and may reserve time for rebuttal at the end of the public hearing. On conclusion of the applicant's presentation, the board members and the staff may then direct questions to the applicant through the chair. Will the applicant please come forward and state and spell your name for the record. My name is Nick Rhodes, R-O-D-E-S. Thank you. Present your case. Okay. So I'm here to rebut the findings of uh, A, B, C, and H. So beginning with A, uh, the, in our opinion, the planning department staff says that the age of this building is not a physical circumstance of the property, but the building location on the property is completely due to the time it was constructed. Uh, when the foundation was poured in 1946, uh, before the street or the sidewalk or most of the buildings in the block were built, there was a, a, a building on each side of this house, but uh, nothing else had been built there. And so it's a poured concrete foundation, as I discussed in the application. According to the municipality st statistics, uh, less than 1% of the residential properties in the Anchorage area were constructed uh, before this building was erected, uh, before it was finished in 47. Um, so the position of the building on the lot is a physical circumstance that is exceptional and it's extraordinary. Uh, finding B, the staff suggests that an alternative layout could stay within the building, existing building footprint, but 
If there is a way to do that, we have not found it. Uh, because we have to remove the existing Arctic entry uh, in order to replace and fix the foundation, the new uh, replacement Arctic entry has to meet current code. The existing entry door and the landing are undersized according to code. The thickness of the Arctic entry walls just wouldn't be allowed today. It, uh, so just in summary, it just can't fit in the existing footprint. If you look at photo five on our application on page 20, you'll see the entry with a covered landing and stairs at the building next door at uh, 1303 8th Street, adjacent to ours. And that is exactly what we're proposing to put in place. Um, it'll be very similar to this, uh, similar uh, size and a covered uh, cover over the entry uh, stairs and landing. Uh, with respect to finding number C, uh, clearly this was not a self-imposed uh, hardship because it <laughs> is uh, over 70 years old and uh, the special conditions don't re result from any of our actions. Um, th the agency noted that the applicant's special condition of desiring to remodel the main floor bathroom for accessibility is a special condition that does not merely constitute inconvenience. So we're in agreement on that. But again, we have not found a way to change the layout that would not increase the size of the encroachment into the front setback. Um, the, it, it's not possible to create a, an accessible bathroom uh, in the basement, as was discussed, because the uh, stairs to the basement are too steep and can't be uh, reconstructed at a shallower slope. They, they just won't fit. Um, nor is it feasible to increase the footprint of the bathroom to the north, because that north wall is as far toward the property line as it can get. The east and the south walls are constrained by heavy cast iron uh, plumbing pipes in the walls. So the only way we can meet the accessibility requirements is to make some adjustments to the uh, west wall of the bathroom. And that means it's gonna encroach into that bedroom. And, uh, and that's why we want to provide a slight, a slight space in that uh, bedroom so that we can fit in a standard bed and a side table. Um, and again, because we have to completely remove the Arctic entry, it's just not possible to fit in the um, existing dimensions, much less meet accessibility requirements. Um, and then finally, uh, we believe that finding H um, is incorrect this is the minimum that will make possible a reasonable use of the land. We purchased this property to retire. It's a modest little home. We just want to be able to use it the same way the previous owner who lived in it 50 years did. We just want to replace the stuff that's crumbling and uh, restore the function that it started out with. And I'll reserve the remaining time for rebuttal. Thank you. Are there any questions of the applicant by the board? Mr. Smythe. Mr. Hale. <laughs> Thank you, through the chair. Uh, I'm having a hard time with uh, with A because it, it seems like there's really no exceptional uh, or extraordinary physical circumstances. I know that you said that uh, you know the location of the house is the is the issue, but that's why it's uh, you know legal conforming now uh, because of the placement. And I kind of understand what you're saying, but <clears throat> it seems like there are no physical can, are there any other physical conditions that would, would allow me to vote for this? Well, through the chair, I guess. Um, I think that 
For, from everything we've been able to gather, we would have to demolish this house to put a conforming Arctic entry on the front of the, of the house. We would have to move the foundation wall. Uh, the load bearing, there, it, it's very complicated and I really didn't want to get into this complexity, but the, the load bearing walls inside the building, there's one right next to the entry door that makes it just about impossible to, to move anything around. The, the fact is that because this Arctic entry doesn't meet current code, um, we, we need a bigger footprint just to place the Arctic, a, a, a code conformant Arctic entry in front of this building. And so it's going to require more area just from that alone. The, this is a, um, a very old concrete foundation structure that's just about impossible to destroy. It's been through all these serious earthquakes without a crack. Um, it's, it's just, the, I mean, I, I really think the only choice would be just to demolish the building and, and start over. That's where we've ended up after looking at it for a year and a half. Thank you. Are there, are there any other questions of the board for the applicant? Are there any questions of staff for the applicant? I have no questions. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. The hearing is now open for public testimony. Representatives of groups have five minutes. Individuals have three minutes. The display at the front will be green with one minute time allotted, then we'll turn yellow. Uh, at the end of the allotted time, the light will turn red and a tone will sound. Um, is there anyone from the public here to testify? Seeing none, the public testimony is concluded. Does the staff have any rebuttal? No, I do not. Thank you, Chair. Does the applicant have any rebuttal? The public hearing is closed and the matter rests with the board. May I have a positive motion, please? Mr. Hale, may I have a second? Oh, Mr. Hale, will you state your motion, please? Thank you. Uh, in case number 2021-0105, move to approve. What's it? Oh. oh, that's easy. Uh, in case 2021-0105, to approve a variance from AMC 21.06.020B, Table 21.06-1, Table of Dimensional Standards, Residential Districts to allow an existing two-family dwelling front exterior west wall to encroach 4.4 feet, and a replacement Arctic entry roof overhang stairs landing an entry pathway to encroach 9.9 .9 feet into the required 20-foot front setback subject to conditions one through three, Shown on page seven of the staff report. Thank you. May I have a second? Ms. McKay, second. Mr. Hale, would you speak to your motion, please? Thank you. Uh, I thought about this quite a bit and looked at it for about 10 times. And I think that uh, although there's no topographic uh, issues 
or wetlands or <clears throat> anything else that would that would allow me to uh, to vote for this. I do think the size of the lot is uh, is a huge impediment to development. It's really narrow. It's only 7,000 square feet. The house takes up just almost the whole thing side to side. I agree that it's poor placement, but I, I really think that just the uh, the lot really makes it difficult. So I I would say that for standard A, I believe it is met because the exceptional, ordinary, extraordinary physical circumstances, the size and the uh, and the narrowness of that lot. Uh, and condition B, I would say that it does create an exceptional hardship because obviously, you know, you're not going to be able to, to build with this thing. Uh, if the thing was a little wider or a little bigger, you would probably have enough room. But I really think that uh, because of the size of that lot, it restricts it and creates an exceptional hardship. So I would say that standard B is met. I agree with staff on C, D, E, F, G, and on H, I think the minimum variance, uh, this would be the minimal variance. I mean, if you're planning on building a something that's slightly larger, that it sounds like you're doing the minimum to enjoy the property as other people do. So I would say that that standard is also met. I guess that's my only comments. Uh, Point of order, uh, I just wanted to point out uh, to uh, bo board, board member Hale, uh, staff, staff in the department found standard C to be partially met. I just wanted to point out that all of eight standards must be found to be met in order to approve the, the variance. Uh, so just, just wanted to point that out. Thank you. So through the chair, I need to address that one as well? Yes, please. Uh, hardship is not self-imposed. Uh, uh, the owner bought the house in its current state. They had nothing to do with the placement of the house or the size of that lot. So I think that it's not self-imposed. So I, stand, I think that standard is completely met. Thank you. Ms. McKay, will you speak to your second? I concur with Board Member Hale. Thank you. Are there other any any other board member comments, or I guess we open this for discussion. Great, right? Uh, right. Um, would anybody else like to say anything about this, Mr. Quinn? Uh, I, I agree with Mr. Hale. I just think that it's a it's an old house on a tight lot that has a lot of uh, issues with the building and a lot of uh, a lot of code requirements and safety features that need to be updated and it just seems like there's there's not a whole lot of options besides granting this variant so they have a little bit more flexibility in their um, ability to provide this Arctic entry and uh, get the uh, house to where it's a little bit more safe and better to live in. Thank you. Are there any other board member comments? Discussion? I would just like to say that, uh, you know, with more and more homes in Anchorage aging, uh, I see this as becoming a, uh, increasingly a bigger problem for everyone. Um, and with the code evolving over time, the building codes specifically, I think it's going to be harder and harder for older homes to meet those code requirements. So uh, I also will be supporting the motion. And now we vote. And the motion passes unanimously. Next, we have case number 2021-0118. Will the staff please describe the notice given in this case? Uh, yes, on October 12th, 2021, a total of 226 public hearing notices were mailed in accordance with procedures outlined in Title 21 
uh, for public hearings and for notice. Thank you. Are there any objections to the sufficiency of notice in this case? Seeing none, will the staff please present the case? Yes, thank you, Chair. Title 21 allows for a roof over a, po a porch to encroach up to five feet within the setback if the roof projection comprises no more than 50% of the total length of the building's front elevation. Uh, the subject property's roof over the front porch encroaches three feet into the front setback. Uh, however, the, the roof over the porch comprises 40 feet of the 57.7 feet total front elevation width, which is approximately 69%. Uh, because of that, the roof projection is not a legal non-conforming structure. This variance request is to allow the existing roof projection to remain as is. The property owner included in their application one written comment from the next door neighbor to the northeast in support of granting the variance. The written comment stated that the porch adds curb appeal to the neighborhood and it is well maintained. Uh, no additional comments or questions are received from members of the public or the Sand Lake Community Council. There were no objections to the granting of this variance from agencies. In order to approve the variance, the application uh, and the, the Zebra board must find that eight standards are met. I will briefly review those eight standards that were in the staff report. The department finds that standard A is not met uh, the subject parcel is not affected by any exceptional or extraordinary circumstances. Uh, there's not a slope, uh, wetlands, uh, or uh, ground failure likelihood or avalanche path. Standard B is not met. The strict application of code does not create an exceptional hardship or deprive the applicant of rights commonly enjoyed by other property owners in the R1 district. Surrounding neighbors do not have similarly large porches and roofs over porches. Uh, the applicant could leave part of the front porch unroofed or remove entirely a portion of the porch to meet Title 21. Uh, standard C is partially met. The hardship uh, is partially not self-imposed and resulting from actions of the applicant constituting an inconvenience. The applicant could meet Title 21 by removing part of the roof or removing part of the porch entirely. Uh, the owner in their application noted that an unroofed front porch would be more open to the elements and would rot faster than, uh, than an unroofed front porch. Uh, the roof overhang also provides protection for people entering and exiting the home. For this reason, the standard is partially met. Standard D is substantially met. The variance of granted will not adversely affect the use of adjacent property. Uh, as mentioned, there was one written comment in support of the variance and the variance is for an existing front porch roof overhang and not for any new construction. Standard E was found to be substantially met. The requested variance will not change the character of the R1 district in which the petition site is located. Uh, granting this variance will not permit a principal or accessory use other than what is already permitted in Anchorage Municipal Code Title 21. Uh, again, hearkening back to the next door neighbor comment, uh, they stated that the unique porch adds curb appeal and brings value to all properties in the neighborhood. Standard F is substantially met. The variance, if granted, does not adversely affect the health, safety, and welfare of the people of the municipality. And the roof overhang ensures rain and snow from the second story of the home do not impede access to the front door. Standard G is substantially met. Uh, the ADA does not apply it to this residential dwelling. However, the roof overhang of the front porch could potentially facilitate mobility impaired access to the home. And finally, standard H is partially met. It, it is reasonable for an existing overhang to be in place to protect the front porch from rot. However, the owner, owners could modify the design of the porch uh, to remove part of the, the roofed porch or part of the porch entirely. The large roof porch is a unique feature not enjoyed by other property owners on the street. In summary, the department finds that standards C, D, F, and G are substantially met, standard E and H are partially met, and standards A and B are not met. 
Code requires that all eight standards be substantially met in order for a variance to be granted. Uh, therefore, the department recommends denial of the variance. However, if after this public hearing, the board finds all eight standards are substantially met for a dimensional variance, then the approval should be subject to the following conditions. One, that the uh, approval is for a dimensional variance to allow an existing roof over a front porch of 57.7 feet in length, comprising 69% of the width of the front elevation, instead of the required maximum of 40 feet, comprising 50% of the width of the front elevation, uh, to extend three feet into the required 20-foot front setback for a single-family dwelling within the R1 district, as shown in the as-built survey included in the application. And two, prior to the variance becoming effective, a uh, notice of zoning action shall be filed with the State of Alaska District Recorder's Office. Uh, that concludes my summary of the staff report. Thank you. Thank you. Does the board have any questions of staff? Mr. Smythe. Uh, through the chair, is there any evidence of a permit process happening when the front, when the, uh, front entry was done in, I think it says 80, between 87 and the 90s of review by the municipality? Uh, thank you, board member uh, Smythe, for your question. Um, let me uh, take a minute just to grab the packet. Uh, if without looking to double check, I do remember reviewing the nonconformity determination, and I, I think it was uncertain of when the porch was built. Um, let me just pull that piece of the packet very quickly. I, I believe the verification of non-conforming status just references aerial imagery. I, I don't think that there was a permit that was issued that we could reference for the front porch, uh, especially because I think there's a range of dates that were given for when the front porch was built. So I, I'm not sure that there, there ever was a building permit for the porch. Thank you. Are there any other questions of the board for staff? Seeing none, does the petitioner have any questions for staff? Uh, will the applicant please come forward? State and spell your name for the record. You have to press the button. You have to press the button. Black dot. There, there we you go. go. Okay. Name is Herbert Wilden, spelled W-I-L-D-E-N. Thank you. Please present your case. Um, I'd like to read for about three minutes and then answer any questions. Okay. If you could First make sure off, to speak into the mic. First off, I'd like to thank the board for their time. Uh, just for clarification, when I went through this process with the Planning Commission, nobody could find anything besides aerial photographs on several pieces of the property. It was built in the 60s. Uh, they did manage to see that there was none in the late 90s and then in about 2000, it looked like that's when the uh, deck and the porch were built. Um, I purchased the home in June of 2020, so I'm a relatively new owner of the place. The, the home appealed to me from the outside because of the covered front porch shown in the submitted pictures. And you can see it's a nice porch. It really adds to the two-story building. As a potential buyer, I requested a home inspection, which noted rotted wood on the deck in the back, painted shut windows, and several other safety issues. But I bought the house anyway. It did not include anything regarding a porch roof code violation. I submitted an application for replacing the rotted deck in the back which required an on-site review, and that's when this entire issue came up because the on-site showed the porch and the deck. I'm, I'm sorry, the porch and the roof. 
Um, it was built over 20 years ago, and as was stated, it's more than 50% of the porch limit. The planning department acknowledged four of the eight criteria used to determine the variance had been met fully, two partially, and two not met. Addressing item A, which is one of the ones not met, there is a slight slope to my driveway. It really does not have much relevance, but technically it is a slope. Item B mentions undue hardship on the property owner, and this is a safety issue to me more than anything else. Removing the portion of the roof only increases the risk of icicles and other things possibly falling from the roof and hurting either my family or other people who come to visit. It would also, as far as uh, the cost goes, it would have some issues regarding you would have to replace the underneath wiring because it has, it's fully lit underneath with about 10 bulbs. Um, it would have to have new gutters put on because the gutters obviously run the length of the porch. And finally, uh, the actual cost of tearing it down. Just to be clear, this does not involve the porch itself. This is only the roof we're talking about. Item C and H are partially met. Item C, I believe, is sig significantly met in that the violation was not self-imposed. I've only lived in the house a year. So when they built it, they did an excellent job as far as design goes. They did an excellent job as construction goes. If you go on that porch, there's nothing rotted on it. Um, item H, as noted, states that the variance is the reasonable use of the land. It does not interfere with anyone and it increases the value of the property because of the looks it gives. In summation, the code violation was not of my making. Removal of the roof section will create a less safe environment, an unnecessary financial hardship to me where I'm placing most of my money on replacing rotted stuff and reduce the property value of the home. As noted in my neighbor's statement, the porch roof in its current configuration adds value to the, to the other homes in the neighborhood which are mostly single story buildings. So it would be very, very difficult to put another roof or porch like that. Um, it's in the best interest of myself as homeowner, the neighborhood and the municipality. Therefore, I respectfully request the board to approve. Thank you. You have five minutes and 54 seconds for your rebuttal. Are there any questions of the applicant from the board? Seeing none, are there any questions of the applicant from staff? I have none, thank you, Chair. Thank you. Will you be, please be seated. Is there anyone from the public willing, interested in speaking for this matter? Please come forward. Press the ominous black dot. Yeah. A red light will come on when you've pressed the right button. Nope. There's a yellow sticker with a dot in the middle. There you, there you go. All right. Okay. Please, please state your name and spell um, your name for the record. My name is Tim Strickland, S T R I C K L A N D. Are you representing a group or yourself? Just myself. I live at 8600 Flamingo. All right. You'll have, you'll have three minutes to speak. Okay. I, I just want to say, I, I think it looks pretty nice what he has there. Well, he, you know, he, he moved in. It, it was there. And the guy that built it, I guess that was about 20 years ago. But I just wanted to say, it looks, it looks fairly nice. And I hope he gets to keep it. And like I say, I look across the street and see it and, and go, you know, the, and I have for 20 years thinking, hey, that looks nice there. It makes the house look nice. I wish I could have done that, but I had kids, so really couldn't have afforded it at the time. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions of Mr. Strickland from the board? Uh, sir, could you, could you please come back and, and turn off the microphone? <laughs>
We're good. Oh. Well, that red light's there still on. It's good. Now it's back on. <laughs> is it still on? Yes. If the light is lit, then it is on. You're good. Okay, we're good now. <laughs> Thank you. Is there anyone else from the public interested in speaking? Seeing none, the public hearing is closed. Does the staff have any rebuttal? I have no rebuttal. Uh, thank you, Chair. Does the applicant have any rebuttal? Mr. Weldon, would you like to speak again? The public hearing is closed and the matter rests with the board. May I have a positive motion, please? Moved by Mr. Smythe. Speak to your motion, please, or state your motion. Uh, yeah, um, <clears throat> in case 2021-0118, I move to approve a variance from AMC 2106020B, uh, Table 21.06-1, dimensional, standard, re re dimensional Standards Residential Districts to allow roof over a porch comprising more than 50% of the total length of the building's front elevation to encroach into the required 20-foot setback subject to conditions one and two uh, shown on page five of the staff report. Um, Thank you. Uh, Mr. Quinn has seconded. Will you speak to your motion, please? I will. I do intend to support this motion. I think we've all heard this before where a homeowner comes in, they've done due diligence in not only uh, the pur purchase of the property, uh, but also through permitting improvements only to discover an existing uh, issue. Uh, the reason that I asked about the permit or plan review was to see if it should have been caught earlier. We've run into play, uh, issues like this where the city has missed it and, uh, and I think puts it on to the homeowner. Uh, to argue the eight points, uh, I'm gonna say that um, where the, uh, it was argued A and B were not met, I'm gonna say that they are met. Let me get back to the Excuse me, back to each one. Um, a, I think that the, uh, both A and B, I think what is, is the real point is that it's existing. The hardship is not only uh, a, uh, a specifically, that it's existing and, uh, and here, of course, it's not gonna happen on somebody else's land in the same uh, district it is specific to this one, and that is the extraordinary physical circumstance. Uh, for B, uh, strip, strict application of the code uh, would create an exceptional hardship because we're requiring demolition of something that already exists. I think that's the definition of it. it it's been there, it has no harm, uh, it's doing a good job and should stay. Uh, e, um, that it, it does not gonna affect the, uh, the character of the zoning district with the time there, that it's already been there, not been an issue. Uh, I think you could argue that that percentage of porch on the front of the house to the exact um, uh, percent is, um, is unreasonable in the intent of what that's supposed to do, and this one's fine remaining. Uh, also then moving on to H, where it said partially met, um, I think that it, uh, the minimum uh, concept here is to leave it as it is uh, right now. And then I agree with all the findings for C, D, F, and G. That's all I have. Um, I have a point of order. Uh, I, I believe uh, board, members, board member Smythe uh, agreed with finding C that found the hardship partially met. I, I believe he spoke to E and maybe intended to speak to C. Uh, just because all eight standards must be found met by the board. So I just wanted to point that out. I'm sorry, say again. Uh, I believe you, uh, you did not speak to standard C, which was found to be partially met by the department. You, uh, you, you spoke to standard C, but you called it standard E, I believe. Oh, okay. I thought E and H were both par partially met. It is C. C is what I meant. Thank you. Thank you. 
Mr. Quinn, will you speak to your second? I'll also be supporting the motion. I agree with Mr. Smythe's summary. I think that the uh, exceptional, extraordinary, or extra, exceptional physical circumstance is the building itself. And if you're looking at trying to somehow cut off, I guess, a little over five and a half feet of each side of the, the gable entry roof, I've just looked at it and I don't really see a, a real good solution there um, without one providing a lot of unnecessary hardship to the to the applicant and and two just opening up a potential can of worms of the problems that you could create by doing that either by the drainage coming off of the the gable entry or the big gable that runs the um, from side to side of the house um, as far as the electrical considerations that the applicant brought up and i just don't see a good solution here so i'll be supporting the motion Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Mr. Hale. Mr. Chair, I'd just like to add on, on H, it says the variance granted is a minimum variance that will make it possible a reasonable use of the land. And I think that in Alaska, a reasonable use of a porch and a house has a roof over it. And if you have a half a roof over a porch, that's not very reasonable. So I think that it's met. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Now we will vote. And the motion passes unanimously. That ends the public hearings for this evening. Uh, do we have any reports, chair, secretary, or committee? Any board member comments? Uh, may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Moved by Ms. McKay, seconded by Mr. Smythe. Any objections? We are adjourned. <laughs>